Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to troubleshoot a heat pump thermostat. So right here we have a Honeywell a Pro 3000 TH uh, thermostat, and so on this thermostat you have emergency heat that you can select. You have heat, off, cool, auto, and on for your fan. Simple thermostat, uh, but effective. Okay, it does not have terminals for an outdoor temperature sensor. This particular one does not. So what we're going to do here is we're going to end up putting this faceplate on and I want to show you what's happening in the thermostat. So what's happening is you have 24 volts coming in the red power wire and it comes back out to the control board through the blue wire and that's what powers the face of the thermostat. In this case what we're doing is we're powering it with batteries here instead of hardwiring it. So you can do it either way or both if you'd like. But you you really don't need to. Um, so we're gonna have we're gonna test heat first. So uh, R right here during heat is gonna touch the green wire, all right, the G terminal, and it's gonna touch the Y terminal. It's not going to power the reversing valve because these systems are meant to if they're gonna fail they're gonna fail in heat mode. So um, Basically, if the if the uh, reversing valve is having a hard time reversing when there's power to it, then basically it would fail in heat mode. All right, so that's why most manufacturers power their reversing valve in cooling only. Okay, so cooling is more like a preference instead of a need. All right, so that's how it works. What we're going to do is we're going to put this faceplate back on, and we're going to test it out with resistance in order to see it work. We're going to turn this temperature down. We're going to turn it down to 72. So 72 is one degree higher than 71. So what should happen here is the red should be touching the Y, which is yellow, and we should have zero ohms of resistance roughly. All right, so you see we have, it's saying like one ohm of resistance. All right, that just has to do with our alligator clips right here and not having a great connection. But anyway, we see ohms. It's not mega ohms, it's ohms. All right, so that's, that's correct. So you have the red wire touching the Y wire. And then we're going to clamp onto the red and the green. Those should have um, continuity as well. If I put it to the speaker, you'd hear that noise, that beeping noise. But that's a little annoying, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it on resistance only. All right, so that's that's heat mode. Now let's go ahead and turn it up the temperature. So it's set at 74, and now we should have the auxiliary heat should turn on. And there it goes. So auxiliary heat, you should have the red still touching the Y. Which it is. You should have the red touching the green still. Which it is. And then you should have the red or the R now touching the W as well. The W is going to your secondary heat source. So there you go. So it has continuity between those two as well. All right. So just to explain this, Right now it's reading mega ohms, cm, and then ohms. It's over limit. That means that these are not touching. When these are touching, then you have very little resistance. Okay, so 0.4 ohms of resistance. Really, we should have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance, but that just has to do with how tight the alligator clips are touching each other. Okay. All right. So that's heating. Now let's just turn this to the off for a sec. And let's just turn the fan on. The fan on should be where the R terminal and the G terminal are touching. So basically, that's the it's turning on your fan. What happens is you have the R comes from the power source, the 24 volt power source comes into the thermostat. Inside the thermostat, it touches the G, and then in this case, it's the green wire. And they are touching, which we are proving, all right, right here now. 
All right, so these batteries are allowing enough power in the thermostat for these contacts to touch. All right, and that's what, how they're showing that we have zero ohms of resistance, meaning that the 24 volt will come out of the thermostat on the green wire back to the control board and tell the blower motor to turn on. Or maybe it's a fan relay or something. All right, and the blower motor will turn on. Nothing else is powered right now. We don't have continuity between red and yellow. Okay. We don't have any continuity and we should not. All right, now let's go to cooling. Turn that back to auto, turn it to cooling, and we'll, we'll turn it down a few degrees lower than 71 degrees. Now, you see that cooling is blinking? We switched it from heat to cooling. And when we do that, there should be a five minute delay so that the compressor, what happens is you have high pressure and low pressure. So you have low pressure on the suction side, high pressure on the high side, and what happens is it takes five minutes for the refrigerants to equalize so that there's the same pressure on each side. And so what this thermostat's doing is it's giving the refrigerant time to equalize so you don't hurt the compressor by trying to turn it on again. It would hurt the compressor if you went from heat to cooling. All right, and, and if the thermostat, or I'm sorry, if the compressor turned off, then on, then off, then on again, okay? That would end up hurting the compressor. So it needs five minutes to equalize the refrigerants. So we'll come back to this and I'll show you this in five minutes, all right? But what's gonna happen is the R is going to touch the Y, the R is gonna touch the orange, the R is gonna touch the G, okay? It's going to touch all of those wires in order to get cooling on because you're going to need to power the reversing valve in order for the refrigerant to change direction and go into cooling mode. All right, so I'm going to pause this and I'm going to come back after five minutes. When that stops blinking and it just says cool on and that's, that's when you know it's the cooling will be. All right, it's been five minutes and you see that cool on is just staying there. It's not flashing. So now you have your R, which is red and your Y, which is yellow, now has continuity, the resistance value. Basically, they are, they are touching. And the 2.5, that's just a matter of how tight I have these electrical connections, all right? So, but it's not mega ohms, it's ohms. So here we go, then you're gonna go from R to O, red to orange, and those are touching, okay? That's powering the reversing valve. And then you're going to go from red R to green G, and those are touching as well. That's when cooling is on. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to get into the troubleshooting. So I just wanted to go over how that worked, and now we're going to check this out and see how to figure out if your thermostat is bad, all right, or if something else is wrong. So since we know that red, orange, green, and Y all need to be connected in order for cooling to turn on. What you do is you come in here, you open up the faceplate, and you're not gonna be able to mag jump these out, meaning like a mag magnet jumper. You're gonna actually have to pull out the red, the orange, the green, and the Y, and wire nut them all together. So we have all of our wires out. We're gonna go ahead and set them into a wire nut and we will go from there. So here we go. For this, since there's four wires, you could, you could end up using a yellow wire nut. Uh, after you capture all of these wires, you want to pull each one out individually to make sure they're making a good connection in there. Okay, so they're all making a good connection. 
Now when doing this, and, and before you take the wires out, make sure that you shut the power off to the furnace or the air handler, all right, whatever's sending the 24 volts over here. All right, after you turn the power off, you're going to take them out, you're going to wire nut them just like this, and you can go ahead and turn the power back on. Now what should happen is you should have cooling turn on right now. If cooling does turn on and it wasn't before, then you know that this thermostat face or the terminal block down here is bad. Okay, you could start by replacing the face. Uh, if it's an intermittent problem, uh, then I would change out the back and the face. Okay, so but some people have it painted on there, and so if it's not the terminal block, there's there's nothing wrong with that. You could just replace this. Just to be safe, though, I would do both. All right, so now let's go to heating. So now all you need to do is take out the orange wire for your heat pump to turn on. So you're not powering your reversing valve. So this setup that I'm showing you is if you don't have root or ream, okay? Uh, you would be using the B terminal if you did have root or ream, and that would be basically backwards. It would be heat, it would be powering R to B during heat mode, and it would not power R to B during cooling mode. But in this case, it's basically every other manufacturer. You are powering the reversing valve in cooling only. So now that we're powering heat, we are no longer powering the O terminal. Okay, so we just have for the heat pump to turn on the R, the G, and the Y. So you'd have to make sure that these wires at your control board are actually connected to the same terminal letters here. All right, so that's very important when trying to figure this stuff out. But that's why they give you the color code. And nine times out of 10, the color code will be followed by technicians. But I would advise that you just go ahead and into your furnace or air handler and check to make sure that, that it is that way, okay? But now, when you turn your power back on, all right, when you turn your power back on, you should have heating turn on, okay? Heating should be on now um, for the heat pump, okay? Now, if you wanted to check for your electric resistance or whatever your secondary heat was, what you can do is you can just take those two out, leave your G wire, make sure you're always having the power off anytime you disconnect these and you're getting ready to put the wire nuts on. So we're going to pull on each of these wires and make sure that they're tight in there. And now your secondary heat should turn on and not your heat pump. So what you have is you have your 24 volt power, your fan, and your secondary heat wire. Okay? But that's how it's done. That's how you check to see. You just basically take this thermostat out of play and you see if everything it turns on like it should. Um, you just have to verify the thermostat colors are going to the same terminal letters in your furnace or air handling as they are in your thermostat. Okay? Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.